This is how last season ended for the Florida State Seminoles. I've had one in my hand the entire fourth quarter. <laughs> You're by working the way. on your fourth espresso. 63 to 3 will do that to you. But this is the largest margin, Jesse, in Capital One Orange Bowl history. 60 point win. The largest margin of victory in a bowl game by any team. Somehow, in some way, the Florida State Seminoles reached the Orange Bowl, taking on the number four ranked Georgia. And they were possibly one play away from having an actual chance at beating them. With Jordan Travis hurt, the Seminoles had no chance at beating Georgia, and I think even they knew that. And the sudden downfall, I guess you'd call it, of Florida State is kind of making sense. Everyone had so high expectations for Florida State, and I don't think they were realizing that Florida lost 10 key players to the NFL draft this past season. That's including their number one wide receiver, Keon Coleman, who got drafted to the Bills. They also lost defense and Jared Verse, who got drafted in the first round to the LA Rams. And then let's not forget about their defense alignment, Braden Fisk, who also got drafted to the Rams this past year. And Jordan Travis, who was drafted in the fifth round to the New York Jets. And keep in mind, that was their best player on their team. And I can continue to keep going on about players they lost. And also, let's not forget about the players they lost to graduation. Now with all that happening, they have no quarterback and they lose their best receiver. They lose their two best defensive linemen. And then all of a sudden, Florida State lands with one of the top quarterback transfers in the country, DJ Ulonglelele as he transfers out of Oregon State and he's heading to FSU. After they land Mr. Alphabet, Florida State fans are all happy, they're excited because they just landed one of the top quarterback prospects in the country, like I said, right? That's like landing Josh Allen in the NFL's terms, so if you don't know a lot about college, that's basically a good comparison for it. DJ was supposed to be one of the top quarterbacks coming out, potentially even a top pick in this upcoming draft, but it's not looking like it anymore. So now we jump all the way to the end of August and we have week zero, the first game of the college football season, and it's Florida State versus Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech not being a top team in the college football bracket or college football team in general, no one really expected Georgia Tech to be on their game for this one. Everyone was expecting a huge win from Florida State, pretty sure they were like 15 point favorites and uh, Let's just say it didn't turn out that way. Florida State lost to Georgia Tech 21 to 24, and that's not a way you want to start your season. Losing to an unranked team, you're starting the season off already ranked in the top 10, and you're taking an L against a team that isn't even ranked really in the top 50 if you want to get that deeply into it. DJ went 19 for 27 with 193 passing yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but it's just the fact that they did lose to a unranked team especially to start the season is not a good sign. All props to Georgia Tech not trying to trash talk them at all, but this shouldn't have been a game that Florida State lost. But they probably thought it's whatever. You know, you can go into next week, you can regroup, you're taking on Boston College, a slightly easier team than Georgia Tech. In their heads, they're probably assuming they're going to go bounce back next week, right? Wrong, because last night they lost to Boston College 28-13, to and DJ probably had the worst game of his collegiate career so far. He went 21-42 for 42 with 272 passing yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Boston College absolutely owned Florida State this whole entire game, and right before kickoff, Florida State was favored in this game by 16 and a half points, and once again, they let their fans down. But luckily for me, I had plus 16 and a half for Boston College. I knew this was going to happen. If you have any current knowledge in the world with college football, you knew this was going to happen. You see all of it being put pen to paper. You watched last week. You see DJ is not looking so good to start the season. Maybe you're assuming he's going to bounce back like I said that's probably what they assumed but no that was just completely wrong and they did the basically opposite of that losing to Boston College now I'm not saying in any means DJ is a terrible quarterback actually let me take that back I am saying he's a terrible quarterback I don't think he's able to process what's going on and I actually mean that He's a Division I quarterback, and he's not able to process what he's doing and where he's throwing the ball. This dude has the worst field sense I've ever seen ever in my life. And I know it just seems like I'm basically trash-talking him, and I kind of am in some sort, but I've never honestly seen a quarterback this bad ever before in college football. I know he has all his talent around him. I think he has a lot of talent. He's just not able to put it on the field with Florida State, and I think we're all seeing that right now. I don't want to say he's the only thing to blame for Florida State starting the season off 0-2. He's a pretty big part of why they are 0-2 right now. I definitely think they could bounce back, but I really don't see them winning any more than five games this season if they're going to start DJ all year long. I say you let DJ start next week. If they lose again, you have to assume there's got to be a point where you have to take him out of the game because if he's going to keep losing constantly every single game, there's got to be a point where you want to not lose. So you got to just take him out. I think that's what's going to happen. I really think Florida State's going to start him next week. He's probably going to play maybe the first half if they're losing in the first half or it's anywhere remotely close or he's just not having a good game in general. 
I could definitely see them taking him out. If they do start DJ next week and they lose again, Mike Norvell needs to either be fired or placed on suspension because I think he's another big reason on why Florida State is doing so bad to start the season. If you look at it this way, they go into Ireland, they take on Georgia Tech, an unranked team, they lose. They come back home in Florida, their home stadium. They take on Boston College, favored by 16 and a half points. They lose again, another unranked team. There's got to be a point where you have to put Mike Norvell on the hot seat. And I really do think he is one of the most overrated head coaches in college football right now. He has one good year last year. The Seminoles are undefeated until Jordan Travis gets hurt. And all of a sudden he's a top 10, top five college football head coach. I don't think that's how it works. I think everyone's completely wrong. If you actually do think Mike Norvell is a top coach in college football. And I know for a fact, Alabama fans are sitting back right now with their head relaxed. They're so happy they did not hire Mike Norvell because if they would have, they would have been probably going through the same thing they're going through right now. Although they have Jalen Monroe, I think with any head coach, Jalen Monroe can make any offense work. You could probably put Jalen Monroe in the Western Kentucky offense. They'd somehow still make the playoffs because Jaden Monroe is just a good quarterback in general. One more thing I do want to talk about is Florida State's run defense is actually the worst run defense in college football right now. Last night, they allowed 263 rushing yards to Boston College. Like, come on. And then the week before that against Georgia Tech, they allow another 190 rushing yards. And that is another main reason why Florida State's 0-2, their run defense. They have none. They lost all their best players to the draft. Jared Verse is gone. You don't have Braden Fisk. And you're basically seeing it all pushed out to you in your eyes that, you know, they don't have a good defense. And I think that's another main reason. So you have the three main reasons on why Florida State is 0-2 right now. One, DJ is not a good quarterback. Two, Mike Norvell is overrated. And three, Florida State's run defense and defense in general is just not that good. Next week, Florida State takes on Memphis. So hopefully they can bounce back in that game. But I really don't know at this point. You got Mike Norvell getting outcoached by Bill O'Brien. Is that really how you want to start your season? 0-2 and, and you got outcoached by two not even top 20 college football coaches right now. All jokes aside, Bill O'Brien's a good head coach. But Mike Norvell should not be getting outcoached by Bill O'Brien and his coaching staff. But, you know, we'll see what happens at this point. We'll see if Florida State can bounce back. Let's see what they do at the quarterback position see if they want to make a change which i very much do encourage them to do if you guys did enjoy make sure to hit that like button subscribe and turn those post notifications on so you never miss another video from the goat who days himself and until next time it's tyler signing off see ya